Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be looking at a Rocky Mountain subspecies of the Douglas fir. So uh, here we are looking at one here. This is a mature specimen. Not um, the type of look that a lot of people are used to seeing with Douglas firs, especially the coastal ranges and the Columbia ranges in, in British Columbia. Uh, the coastal Douglas fir subspecies is much, much larger, much taller, and lives quite a bit longer. But this this one is for the area quite still quite a large tree, and uh, long lived. Um, there's some there's some in the area uh, in the on in the Bow Valley on the eastern side the slope of the Rockies that are 750 years old estimated. So still quite a long live tree for the area, probably one of the longest living um, trees in the area. So we're in the foothills, the eastern slope of the Rocky Mountains, and we have here a grove, uh, an old growth grove of Rocky Mountain Douglas fir. So it's not a true fir, uh, just like the coastal species, it is a, a separate uh, species, separate family. So it's in the uh, pseudo suga, which means uh, like false fur, I guess. And uh, okay, so here's a younger tree uh, that's going to allow us to take a closer look at the the needles. Um, just like a true fur, the needles are flat. And um, these ones have a nice kind of silvery coloring underneath. And they are flexible and not prickly like a spruce needle. Um, pretty, pretty easy to grab onto and you know, that kind of thing. So there's a, there is a definite difference between these needles and spruce needles. And again, there is also a difference between these needles and the true fur like a subalpine fir or balsam fir. So yeah, this is a younger tree, probably somewhere around five, six years old. Um, and there's quite a few young ones here up at the top of this hill in an open sunny spot. Um, these trees in this area like a well-drained sunny location such as this or south or west facing hillsides. So. Take a look at uh, some of the more mature ones. Here's a kind of a nice example of some of the lichen growth on some of these older trees. This is in a full sun area and we have just an enormous amount of lichen growth on these lower branches. Kind of a bit of a giveaway for a fairly old tree even though it's not terribly large maybe 16 or 15 inch diameter on the bottom so but still a fairly old tree so here's a great example looking up and through the branches just a, a lot of lichen growth here so here's a good example of an older tree um, and kind of the comparison of what what the growth habit is at the at the upper upper branches here so on the left of this one in the center of the of the screen here is a lodgepole pine and we can see that the uh, Douglas fir has a wider growth habit at the top uh, for the most part than the lodgepole pine and even some of the as you can see below the white spruce which are quite a bit more pointy on the top so and they often have like a, a rounded a rounded top instead of a pointy kind of growth um, kind of area at the top so kind of an easy way to identify them uh, at a distance um, you can just have a look up and when you see these kind of wider uh, rounder tops um, oftentimes in if the habitat's right they can be the that's where you're gonna find the Doug, Douglas fir okay here we are at the base of a very large and old Rocky Mountain Douglas fir this 
the base of this tree is somewhere around the 30 inch mark maybe a little little wider in diameter and you can see the bark has a very um, rough uh, texture all the way up it's covered in lichen um, that rough bark texture obviously is uh, something that lichen can get a foothold on pretty easily and these really old trees certainly have a lot of those this particular one doesn't have needle growth until about a third up the tree um, it is in a fairly sunny spot well drained um, and not maybe not more than 80 feet or or you know 25 meters tall somewhere in that range but quite a large quite a large tree Okay, we've uh, made our way down slope here into uh, kind of a single species grove here of Rocky Mountain Douglas fir. And you can see there's the trees here in this area aren't particularly large, but they still have that rough bark pattern covered in lichen. Uh, so they may be a little bit older than you one might expect for a tree this size. Um, from my experience in the area, the Douglas fir, young Douglas fir that I see growing here, grow anywhere between half an inch or to six inches in a year. So it can be very slow, um, obviously depending on the suitability of the site. We also see plenty of last year's cones on the ground and a little bit of undergrowth, some common juniper, um, as we can see down here and a few other herbaceous plants but uh, anything that grows here would have to be tolerant of dry uh, conditions the forest floor here is quite quite dry uh, it's a west facing slope so okay <clears throat> so i brought a couple cones out here um, just so we can kind of compare uh, some of the differences with some year old and new cones so it's early september so the cones on the left hand side there's three um, that are lighter in color and closed those are this year's uh, seed crop i guess uh, and the, there are still seeds in those cones and so the the ones on the right hand side the darker brown ones they are open and the seeds have been dispersed so those are last year's uh maybe even the year before so um yeah so that's the difference um between the the two the fresh and the the ones that have already done their job and you can see the cones are pretty distinct from um like a spruce cone or something similar and and even a fir cone a true fir cone is, is very different so you can see i'll use a stick here to point this out these little bracts there uh, that's kind of the telltale sign of a douglas fir cone and you can see them on the new right there on the new cones uh, very distinct and you can always tell a douglas fir uh, be it coastal or rocky mountain douglas fir uh, by those that trait so anyway that is the way uh, a very easy way to identify this tree all right we're a little further down slope not too far um, in this grove of douglas douglas fir um, you can see here's a large one large uh, specimen there and it pretty much just ends and then it gives way to aspen spruce typical foothills forest so i guess what that says um as this is a fairly old and large tree that's been here with plenty of seed production as you can see by the cones on the ground scattered all over um these these trees just prefer a certain type of habitat and um there's just not a lot of it i think that's kind of the major takeaway from what I see in this area they are um, 
I guess they can be quite densely populated in areas where they do well and then uh, just kind of ends. So quite an interesting area here. Uh, this is actually in a provincial park. So thankfully this grove is protected and uh, doesn't obviously see a lot of forest fire activity. So that's great. So this area here is uh, kind of one of those little gems that you stumble on in the foothills. Thanks for watching.